Time for the BA Breakdown here on the KRNG Afternoon News. I'm Skyler Cooper, and as we are each Tuesday at this time, we're joined live by Broken Arrow City Manager Michael Spurgeon. Mr. Spurgeon, how are you? I'm doing good, Skyler. How are you? Good. It's a busy day on this election day. I know you usually like to open the segment on election days with a little uh, civic duty note for there. So anything you want to throw out to the, the citizens of Broken Arrow today? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's always important to exercise our our constitutional rights to get out there and support the candidates of our choice. And I'm just encouraging all Broken Aarons that haven't voted yet on their way home to stop at their respective polling places and go ahead and, and basically vote for, for those candidates that are seeking uh, to represent us at all different levels. So I'm excited about Election Day every day. It's it's uh, it's uh, one of those days that uh, happens a couple of times a year normally, and I'm, I'm really happy that uh, we're here, and I'm looking forward to seeing the results. You seen that video, the uh, the woman who threw a drink at somebody at McDonald's the other day? That's going around on the BAPD Facebook today. <laughs> Uh, I have not seen it. I heard about it, um, you know, but uh, I, d- I just don't understand sometimes why, you know, people take those actions or, or they get so upset that it rises to that level. Yeah, I don't know why I'm asking you about that. I just thought it was a weird video. It's not, I shouldn't laugh about it, but man, people do get worked up over, over weird things and uh, she got her money back, it seems. The, the police <laughs> say that uh, she got a refund over something and maybe some words were exchanged and that drink got tossed, so... Anyway, we are talking with Michael Spurgeon, the city manager, and lots to get to today. One of the things I want yes. to ask you about uh, is follow up from from the last couple of weeks. And just since you and I talked, we found out about um, another Broken Arrow police officer who had been fired after a, a public drunkenness arrest down in Oklahoma City. That that actually happened in June. And then we also found out about the off duty firefighter who's now on placed uh, placed on administrative leave after an incident in Pawnee County. So. Uh, my question is, we've had all these incidents involving BAPD and now the fire department, and people are just kind of going, man, it's been a bad year or so for Broken Arrow in terms of the public officials in this regard. So have you been able to track down? Is there is there something going on? Is it just a bunch of coincidences? Why are all of these things clustering like this? Well, I was hoping that you would uh, bring this up, Skyler, Skyler because I, I do want to talk about it. It's, it's important, uh, the public's confidence and the public's trust, uh, obviously, I've had a couple of phone calls uh, to my office, and I've I've spoken to residents about this, and I'm just really glad that you're you're uh, bringing it up. So let me let me just say this is that uh, the the incident involving Officer Brandon Watts, who who's uh, uh, basically was arrested in Oklahoma City back in and back in June, um, he was terminated. Anyone who watched that video, which is a public record, I'm sure they would agree that and come to the same conclusion we did. That behavior is not acceptable, and and on behalf of this organization, the Citizens Broken Air, I'm not going to let anyone who blatantly disrespects the profession of law enforcement or the public to work for the city of Broken Arrow. Uh, the op- the incident involving the firefighter, I mean, that's under investigation. I'll eventually get a recommendation from Chief Moore on that situation at the appropriate time. You know, the officers involving the the theft, uh, three officers were terminated. Uh, the the uh, district attorney ha- currently has those cases. They're under review, and we could get a decision if he intends to do any charges uh, at any time. So I just wanted to recap those. And the first thing I want the public to know is that I believe these individuals made very poor choices. And uh, from my perspective as city manager, I have responsibility to hold people accountable whenever they make poor choices, That especially when they violate policies and procedures and that is what, that's what was done here. And I, I, I definitely appreciate the effort of the chief and his leadership team to basically do thorough investigations to make sure that when the recommendations come to me, I have all the information. Uh, but I will tell you, as far as uh, the department itself, uh, I've looked at these incidents. The chief has looked at these incidents, and they're not connected. I believe they're just the actions of uh, individuals that didn't make really good decisions and they've been held accountable. Now, what are we doing going forward? Well, the chief has worked really hard on just reinforcing the importance of policy, the importance of the, the sacred trust that they have to the community, both on duty and off duty, and that they represent the city of Broken Arrow uh, directly, the department and the law enforcement profession, and the importance of maintaining integrity at all times couldn't be even more important. And so I know they're working very hard just to re- reinforce the importance of making good decisions. And I believe me, I have the utmost respect for everyone that works for the d- department and I have their support. I have their back. But if there are people that, that don't meet policies or they or they violate policies, I have a responsibility to hold those people accountable. 
Broken Arrow City Manager Michael Spurgeon with us. It's the BA Breakdown on the KRMG Afternoon News. We know that Broken Arrow Police Chief Brandon Berryhill is uh, basically on his way out. He's announced his retirement. He'll be done sometime in October. Have you started the interview process for his replacement, and are these types of conversations going to be uh, a part of that? Uh, I've got some really good news as we, we hired an executive search firm that, that has experience in finding uh, a chief of, or doing chief of police recruitments and the actual the job recruitment will close at the end of this month. And right now I have approximately 30 individuals that applied for this position. I'm very excited about the pool of candidates. I've not seen them yet. I'm just getting updates from the recruiter and absolutely as a part of the recruitment process. I'm going to bring forth some of the challenge that we have and ask them to talk to me and give me some suggestions or what their opinions or how they would handle certain situations, because obviously that is something that's that's uh, very contemporary right now. And I want to find out how they handle those matters and also what they would do in order to ensure this doesn't happen again so we can maintain that's public trust. And so I'll probably start looking at candidates in October to, for this position and to hopefully have a decision by the end of the year, Skyler. We reported last week about the new internet provider coming to Broken Arrow, Metronet. And uh, I saw you personally responding on social media to a lot of people who seem to think that the city or maybe you personally were preventing certain (laughs) providers from coming to town. Can you explain how that works and how I I saw you were saying to a lot of folks that that's just not true? Well, there's a misperception. Uh, Folks have have been either told or or they have or come to the conclusion that you were the only one or two providers for broadband internet service uh, are allowed within the community and that's simply not the case the the challenge is is that if someone's going to provide that service with our community they have to bring in their own public infrastructure not public but own private infrastructure uh, to be able to service the customers in the areas that they would like to service and so we were fortunate enough the earlier um, this year to find out there was a company that was going to be making a very large investment to bring broadband services uh, to Broken Arrow. Uh, they approached us. We did not approach them, and they did their research and determined uh, the company known as Metronet, which is already in 18 states and over 300 communities throughout the United States, uh, decided that they wanted to make their first investment in Oklahoma in Broken Arrow. So they're going to be starting the process of investing $35 million for their private infrastructure to be able to service whatever customers choose to to basically contract with them. And so really we look at it as just another uh, opportunity for folks to have choice within our, within our community uh, to provide the best uh, service that the, they would like to, to have in order to meet those needs. Maybe too soon to tell, but do we know what part of town they're going to start in? I read that they're going to turn service on as they go. I understand they're going to be focusing in the north part of our community. And uh, coincidentally, I asked for an update yesterday, and I'm waiting to see a little bit more detail about their operational plan because I would like to make sure that we have that information to the public. So probably by, I'd say next week or right after Labor Day, I should be able to provide more information about what their plan is specifically. Broken Arrow City Manager Michael Spurgeon, I have more for you today, but it's an election day. We're kind of busy and we're kind of late, so I'll just have to put a pin in it for next week. So we'll talk to you then. Hey, listen, thank you very much, Scott for bringing up about the police officers and I, I hope that I was able to answer your questions. Yep, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, definitely bring that up again as we uh, get more information. So thank you, sir.